and we are going to be going over the um, bell bottom pattern from Petite Stitchery. I believe it's referred to as the bitty bells in the baby sizes, the tardy bells in the kid sizes, and I think it's women's tardy bells as well for the women's sizes. So you have from baby all the way up to women's in this pattern. It's super cute. It's not the um, bell bottom that we originally did. The CKC pattern has the um, attached bell bottom. This one is a flare pant bell bottom. So like your traditional bell bottom flare pant. As always, we link the pattern down below in the description for all the patterns that we feature in our YouTube videos. So if we're doing a tutorial over a pattern, you want to know where that pattern is, we always link it in the description down below. So click the right hand, <laughs> so click the arrowhead on the right hand side underneath this video and the description will pop open with a whole bunch of good information, including um, the, our favorite places to shop for fabric. So make sure you check that out. If you're in the comments asking where to get the pattern, we don't tell you, it's in the description. So just let me know. Okay, but this pattern, all you need, it has option to do elastic waist or knit band waist. Uh, we're gonna do the knit, knit band. <laughs> I guess that's what you call it. Let me see. I, call it, I think it's yoga. Knit waistband. Oh, it's kind of knit waist, knit whatever. You guys know what I mean. So the yoga waistband, pretty much. It gives you the option to do um, both. You could do either or. Either. You could do the elastic or you could do the yoga waistband. We're doing the yoga waistband because I feel like it's the most comfortable. Um, but you can absolutely do the yoga waistband and follow the instructions for the tutorial for that. Um, but we're going to be doing the yoga waistband. So what you'll need is you'll need a back bell, bell bottom piece and you will need a front bell bottom piece. That's what we're doing here. Um, and you need to cut them mirrored. There are no folds on this pattern. No folds. You just need the front and the back and you'll cut your waistband out with the given measurements in the cut chart, which we're doing 2T, which means we need a waistband at 5.75 inches or by 17 inches long. That's what we're doing. 5.75 inches wide by 17 inches long. So the stretch is going to be going across the length of the waistband because you want the stretch to put it on. So just remember that. Um, so the pattern here, you're not going to fold this pattern piece. So you have to make sure you're paying attention to your grain line when you're cutting your fabric. For this pattern, I used vertical stripe double brush poly. Um, this was bought a long time ago, so I'm not sure where you could find it if you do find this. Let me know because these are really cute and I need more. <laughs> but um, yes, so you just need the two two fronts, two backs, mirrored images. How I do that is I fold my fabric and cut all around the pattern piece and you get two mirrored images. Um, so make sure you're not cutting any of these on a fold. Make sure you're paying attention to the grain lines so that your pattern piece is centered up, especially if you're using some sort of fabric like vertical stripes or something like that where the um, direction of the pattern is important. Always make sure that you're putting your pattern piece on your fabric lining up so that this your fabric is going to go correctly on the pattern piece. So make sure you're paying attention to that. So I'll save yourself, it'll save yourself some wasted fabric because I've cut things upside down and been so frustrated. So make sure you're paying attention to the direction of your fabric when laying your pattern piece down so that a simple doing this could be the reason um, your stuff is messed up. So simple thing to fix in the beginning. So I've already cut this stuff out. So let's go ahead and look at what I've done. So what I've got here, I've got, this is the back piece here. I've already got two cut here. I've got them right sides together. So there's two pieces here for the back and there's two pieces here for the front. And I've cut my waistband here, which is 17 inches long by five inches wide. The stretch is going across the waistband because these are vertical stripes. And I'm going to, we're going to do the waistband like we do any other cuff or waistband. I like to do the um, ham hot method. I realize I've been saying this incorrectly. It is the ham hot. And the reason it's called the ham hot is because you fold it hamburger, which is what this fold was. This fold was hamburger. And this fold is hot dog. So if you're familiar with that back in grade school when we learned hot dog and hamburger, it is the ham hot because you hold, you fold hamburger first and then hot dog. So if that helps you remember which way to fold, that's how you fold it. And then, so this would be the fold, the first hamburger fold here. And this is the hot dog fold. So that means this part right here is the part that we're going to serge. If you don't have a serger, use a zigzag stitch. That's perfectly fine. So for the construction of the bell bottoms, it's going to be 
very similar except for the fact that you don't attach bell bottoms to the CKC pattern. You start with the crotch seam here, which is right here, and this little tiny one right here, which is the front. Um, of course, the back is going to be higher rised for the booty, and the front is going to be lower rised. They do look really low rise, not on a child, but when you put them on a child, they look a lot better. So don't freak out thinking that this is going to be super low because you have to add your waistband to it and it'll make it a little bit better. So crotch seam and crotch seam. I'm going to surge those up and come back over here and show you what to do next. Okay, so here is the front piece, which has got the smaller crotch curve here. I have surged just right here and right here. And here's the back piece. And um, just in case I wasn't clear, these are the front piece right sides together. So this is the entire front piece. Now when we open it up, you'll see that the crotch is now sewn here. And we have our, this is our front piece. And this is our back piece here when you open it up. It's our back piece. Okay, so now what you're going to do, just like with the CKC pattern, you're going to put these right sides together and you will have to match them up. They won't look like they line up. It's no problem. Again, like I said, it accounts for the thicker thighs and the booty in the back. So the back is going to be naturally wider than the front. So you're going to go ahead and pull it over, pull your curves to match up. Make sure all this stuff's matched up here. And then you're gonna surge down that entire side seam. And then the best way to do it, I think, is to surge that and then pull it over and match up this side, just so you're not pulling it off. But you're gonna make sure that your side seams are matched up. So do one, then pull the other to match up, because like I said, the back is gonna be smaller. So let's go over the sewing machine and get that done. Okay, so we're here at the serger. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is grab the waistband here like we did the ham hot method. Fold it here. This area that we're surging up here. I like to put the folded edge in first. Sorry, the camera's shaking. All right, so then that's what that looks like. And then I like to go ahead and quarter up my waistband. Snip in those two points, flipping it out like so matching up the back seam with the two points that i just snipped and finding my side equal points i'm just snipping it just enough so that i can determine the correct size there so that the waistband's all quartered up so now let's go ahead and get the side that we matched up here you may have to if you moved it at all you may have to make sure so we got this is the bottom side seam here so I'm just making sure that everything lines up. I'm gonna go ahead and do a surge. I like to use a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, I pretty much use that on everything, even if the pattern calls for something different. Um, that may make your garment just a little bit different than the intended size. So make sure that you check your patterns um, for seam allowances. But I find that quarter inch seam allowance typically is pretty standard um, for most patterns, so. <laughs> make sure you're following it if you need to pin it pin it um, just make sure you're removing your pins if you're using a serger if you're doing a zigzag stitch I still recommend you remove your pins um, but it's not as in, as important as a serger but this pattern is super simple all right and so like I said you have to pull this over now to match because as you see it does not lay um goodness if i get it, it doesn't lay at all but it doesn't match up right so you'll have to pull it over to match up because the back is naturally bigger than the front so here we go Again, if you can't hold your stuff steady, you need pins, more power to you, or you need clips, that's fine. I don't particularly like clips. Um, I like pins. I don't know. A lot of people use clips. I just don't. <laughs> I haven't got the hang of clips. I feel like they still shift a lot with the clips. And 
And so now will be the inseam. <laughs> so now will be the inseam. Um, so what you'll do is, of course, it's going to be the inside seam that goes all the way around to both sides of the bells. So match up those points here. It will require a little bit of work to get them all matched up. And then I like to just match them up as I go and just make sure that my crotch seams are together because that's important or it will look silly. So just make sure your crotch seams are lined up and that everything else is lined up as well. All right, I'm still holding my crotch seam together here just to make sure that it doesn't move. Making sure that these edges are still lined up. All right, and so when we go over this crotch seam here, this is the area that most people have issues with because they don't fully get this seam, both of these seams in the um, seam here. And they'll find that the crotch pops. It does pop sometimes just because of wear and tear, sometimes sizing issues, but majority of the time it's because you didn't fully get this crotch, these two crotch seams in the seam. And so it unravels. That can also be due, due that can also be due to um, cutting your, good God, that can also be due to cutting your tails too short here and then them coming unraveled when you do your seam here. But what I like to do is make sure that I cut those and get those in the seam. So I made sure that that went through. Another way you can double check or, or reinforce is to go ahead and just do a zigzag stitch. If you have a sewing machine, do a zigzag stitch over that surge stitch just to give it a little bit more reinforcement. I haven't had an issue with just making sure that it goes in there, but um, it could also be a tension issue too if it happens consistently and you've made sure everything's normal. So we got our crotch seam here, and that's what I meant by that. I just make sure that you get both of those in there good because um, sometimes people don't pull it through all the way, and you'll miss a seam there. And it's just really important for the construction of this garment. So we pretty much got this part done, and now we just need to add the um, yoga waistband. So what you'll do is, of course, you don't have to quarter this now because you have four seams. You have the front and the back seam and the side seams. So you don't have to quarter that. We've already quartered our waistband. Now we're just going to add it to it. Now I'm going to add it to the inside here. I like to put the seam, wait, yeah, the seam, that's, it's blending in nicely. I like to put the seam of the waistband on the back. So I'm going to stick it in here like this, match my seam up, and I'm going to do something called uh, nesting your seams, which means that if my serger seam here, well, all these tails are in the way. If my serger seam is going one way, which mine is going this way, I am going to put, that's not, yeah, so my serger seam is going that way. I'm going to put this seam going this way. And it just nests that seam and hopefully it will line up perfectly. So you'll pin that. I do pin my waistbands. Um, And this here, just go around making sure that you're putting your waistband on the inside of this garment, which is turned inside out. And I like to add my tag in this step too, which is why I started adding my cuffs like this. Because it makes it really easy to attach a tag. All right, so we're at our last one here. I'm going to start right here on the side seam and I'm just going to put it in here. And I'm not going around inside just because it's easier to add my tag this way. So I'm going to go ahead and go around. And then this is going to be the back. And you'll just stretch the waistband enough to lay flat on the bell bottom opening. Okay, so here is the back. And this is where I add my tag. So I've got my sew-in tag here. I fold it. These tags are from Tagtopia on Etsy. All 
right so then I just go ahead and place it over the seam here center it over the seam and then hold it down once it goes under it's on there and it's good to go so then you can let go and wait till you get to your next pin remove the pin move to your next pin which is going to be the middle front middle Remove that pin, and then you should be back to where you started, this last stretch here. Alright. And then you're just going to overlap, pull it out, cut this, and then all that's left now to do is hem the bells. And I like to do that by surging around the bells. I'm just tucking my tail here. With the knit picker I got from Waywalk, I think it's like a dollar maybe, uh, but it tucks your tails in nicely. You never have to worry about that coming undone. It's completely secured. You can stretch it all you want. It's not going to come undone. So then we have our waistband attached to our bell bottoms. You can top stitch this down if you choose to. You don't have to. It's totally up to you um, if you're adding tags. That's how I add my tags. And then we're going to focus on the bells here because that's all that's left. So I'm going to turn my knobs down to zero just because that's what I like to do. I, figure, I feel that that creates the least amount of tension and gets the best uh, result here. So I'm literally just going to sew around my bell bottoms, um, serge around them. If you don't have a serger, this step's just completely optional. I like the way it makes it look like a... Um, Oh, goodness a cover stitch I like the way it makes it look like that when you're top stitching um, hemming the bottom here so and I'm like barely cutting anything off so this is clearly just to I mean this is the purpose of this is just to make it look a little bit cosmetically better. That's it. It's optional. You don't have to do this. I just like the way it looks. Plus, it makes it a little easier to hem, in my opinion. And then this, I don't tuck these just because I'm going to hem them anyway. And so I'll just cut those kind of short, and I'm going to do the other one real fast. been cutting orders all day so my arms are like really tired I'm trying to keep them down my elbows down So then next we're going to go to the sewing machine and we are going to um, hem these up. So let's go over there. All right, so hopefully I have enough thread in here. <laughs> My bobbin um, threader stopped working up here um, and I just haven't had the time to get it fixed. So I had rigged up something to, make <laughs> to wind bobbins with um, just because I, I've heard some bad reviews about the little side bobbin winder thingies. And um, so I haven't pulled the plug or pulled the trigger on those yet, but I'm just going to zigzag stitch around these bell bottoms here and I'm folding it up about a half an inch. If you need to measure, absolutely do that. Um, these little tools are great to do that. You can press up these little tools. You can put them on there just to make sure that you're doing about a half an inch. I'll double check myself. Um, I am actually doing about three quarters of an inch. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm not. I'm doing a half inch. <laughs> Just kidding. I was looking at the wrong side of the measurement. I'm doing a half an inch. Um, so about a half an inch is what I like to hem these up to. So I like to do just a regular zigzag stitch. My zigzag stitch is um, the simple zigzag stitch, and it is at five widths and two length. That's just what my machine automatically sets it on, and I like the way it looks for this. So. And so just keep folding around the circle about a half an inch around, all the way around. And then just keep 
keep going around your circle. And this is what it looks like on the other side. So. It may bunch up over it may bunch up over the um, seams, the side seams, so you may have to pay attention and pull it if it needs to be pulled. Cover stitch is next on our list of things to buy, so. <laughs> We've been getting by doing it just like this, so we haven't um, really felt the need to absolutely get one, um, but here soon we're going to just go ahead and do it. So we're almost back to where we started. And then I just like to overlap where I started, do a back stitch, and then pull it out. And then there is our perfectly hemmed bell bottom all around it. That's what I like to do. I like to do zigzag stitch because I feel like it gives the best um, stretch around the bell, even though you don't really need it. Um, and then give it a good press because it, the around the curve, it is a little hard to um, not get it to be wavy. And so it will be wavy. Just press it out and that will go away as long as you don't stretch when you're sewing. So hopefully I have enough thread in here left for this one. All right, so again, half inch up. We're gonna do this one really quick. and then you're good to go that's what it looks like all done still stretches and then you just press it to make it look better so let's go see what these look like finished love how they look super flare they look super cute on I just love how flared they are at the bottom they're super cute they're just as flowy um, you have a little bit more control over the length because you can hem them up long or higher, whatever you need to. I mean, you could do that with your CKC bells too. But this is another style of bell bottom that's really popular right now. Super traditional flare bell bottoms. I love this pattern. Super simple to do. Really easy to put together and doesn't take up too much fabric. This what you could do out of the yard and have a little bit left over. Um, this was a size 2T. It does require a little bit of fabric, but not near as much as the circle skirts on the CKC bill. So if you're looking to save a little bit more fabric, this pattern might be better for you bills. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope this helped you out on how to construct these beautiful bell bottoms. Make sure you subscribe. If you're not subscribed, if you haven't subscribed, why haven't you subscribed yet? <laughs> hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell too because we post a new video every Tuesday. Life can get crazy and I know you can miss the video. We won't hold it against you but if you go ahead and click the notification bell, YouTube will remind you when we post a new video so you don't have to worry about forgetting a video. Click the notification bell. Like I said, it'll remind you. No worries about missing videos. I think that's it. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. Bye!